Right, in this video, I'm going to be discussing the issue of can, can we mix different grades of oil in our cars? So, that's a question that a lot of people do ask themselves. Now, I would say the answer is yes or no. When it's no, when it should it be no, is when, for example, your owner's manual does not specify that that grade of oil is correct for your car so when you look at your owner's manual that's the one you should follow and they usually give you at least two choices so on my Ford Focus for example I've, I've got, I can have 5W30 or 0W30 now 0W30 that's the preferred one that's your first choice if you can use it and this is almost in the manual like your second choice now notice here I've got 0 W30 fully synthetic and 5 W30 fully synthetic now so the, the the question is can you use can you mix different oils my answer is the short answer is yes if they are the same if they are within the specifications if your manual says you use 0 W30 or you can use 5 W30 but preferably 0 W30 because they always give you one to uh, go by yes you can mix it that's a simple answer now I, in some of my videos I have done exactly that and uh, I know what I'm doing and I know I can reason out using logic why I've done that why I have mixed it so it's not a surprise to me because I usually quite often get these sort of comments and one of the comments I'm just going to break down bit by bit and I'm going to prove to you why why it's okay to mix oils and, and why to use certain parts over other parts what I mean by that is OEM products over just anything you can find so I'm just going to break down I'm not going to name the person's name I'm just going to break down every point the person says what happened to a good old fashioned, I guess they mean good, what happened to a good oil flush first at these amount of miles? So, my, my car's what done probably 160,000 plus by the time this video was done. 160,000 miles. Now, my argument is, 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 is this why do I not use an old fashioned oil flush even at high mileage? Because my argument is when you, when you go to undo that plug, and all the oil, all the old oil that's in the car gushes out. That is your oil flush. You flush the oil, especially if the if the engine's slightly slightly warm and it's still it's a few degrees above the uh, ambient temperature. The flushing of the oil down. You know, don't do the old thing where the people are doing, what they're doing these days is putting a pipe down and using some sort of suction device down the um, down the uh, dipstick. Right, so when I look at the service manual, I mean not the service manual, the owner's manual, 1.5 TDCI or focus, and you should do the same, check, check your owner's manual, it says preferably actually it's 5W30, and it should meet the WSS M2 C913 stroke C specifications. So, as long as that specification is met, all is well. So what you do is when you buy oil, make sure you know what specification it should be. And on the bottom, somewhere on there, it should say, should say what specs it is. Now bear in mind this here, ACEA C2. And even on this bottle, ACEA C2 in the UK, that's the specification that we normally see, and I will transfer it later when I show you the online um, the online uh, service manual. Right. So check of your owner's manual to make sure you, what you buy matches. So I've basically got C2, and then there's a C2. So that's the specification I bought, and I'll prove to you that although it's hard to Hard to transfer over from looking at the owner's manual, it is the same thing. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, what was I going to say? Now, 
if and actually you'll see you'll see in the service manual it prefers that one zero w30 if your car is getting on a bit you can go up a bit you can go up to a 5w30 so the first number so you can go from zero to five which is fine if your car's uh, getting on a bit and in fact it kind of complies with this so 5w30 is the preferred one but on the um on a uh, service manual electronic service manual it prefers 0w30 however this number the second number that's the uh, viscosity of it when it's hot and they that the uh, data shows and the uh, common knowledge is that when you can go up a little bit with this first number and you can go down a little bit with the second number but don't do the opposite don't go um don't go up with the second number in this case and, and don't go down with the first number so you can go up if you want with the first number and you go down if you want with the second number but don't don't do it the other way around okay that's one that's my first point i'm going to make across put across second point i'll have to read this out person says wouldn't mix personally unless you fancy a rebuild I've, I've been running my cars like this for 30 years since my Ford, Ford, uh, Ford Fiesta Mark 1 um, so I've never had a problem with smoke sludge uh, blown head gasket uh, problem starting unless it's something like a starter motor right so so I, I've never had to rebuild anything because I've done something wrong. Okay. Next point. Yeah, and you can get just as good or not, or if not better, oil filters and Ford filters. Here's my next oil change coming up soon. Here's my oil filter from Ford. Uh, the the reason why I bought this, all right, it's fifteen pounds. But the thing is. It's, it's about ten pounds more than uh, elsewhere. However, this thing actually fits. When I've first few two filters I bought for this Ford did not fit, and I bought it from a, a supplier. And I put in the registration, didn't fit. So that's why I bought this. And you're going to be assured of the quality of of something if you're buying it from OEM Ford. If you go over the counter to Ford, go to a, a Ford outlet and buy buy their products, you're not going to be wrong about that. So that's why I do it. I mean, I don't always do it. I bought this for about five pounds for my uh, Honda Civic. It's not a Honda filter, but I know it'll do, and it's an older car, and I don't really care as much about it. But however, it's a, a big saving, so I do buy it. But I buy, I buy that filter, and I suggest you do for your Ford Focus because nothing else will fit. Not at the moment, currently on market. Next point. Something to do with sound, this person says. Something to do with sound. I've never had a problem with sound. They're saying if I don't use the right oil, it's going to make a lot of noise. I don't think so. All right, next point. Should change the uh, copper washer at the bottom every two oil changes. You know, come on, think of it. A copper washer is made of metal. It's about that thick, right? If it's not, if you tighten it up, it's not leaking. It's it's okay. It's not like it. It's not the same as the the bolt. I would I would say maybe every, every few oil changes you might need to change the uh, sump bolt because that thing might get worn. A, a washer isn't going to get worn. It's it, if it, it's going to have to wear out until it's like halfway in. It's fully fully pitted for it's not going to work. If you tighten it, it doesn't leak. That's it. It's just a washer. You don't have to change it every time. That's like a common myth. I don't know what you you guys think. You don't have to change the washer every time. Oil. This person suggests, suggests that I do an oil change every three thousand miles. Are you joking? I do about seven on a on a busy week. I do about seven hundred miles a week. That works out about an oil change every five weeks. This about it's about fifty pounds if you're going to go full oil change and full proper filter and everything 35 pounds for the oil and 15 pounds for the filter. are you joking i haven't got one out of all that much time 
Every every five weeks, can you imagine having to change the oil? Because they're like, no, the the car has got has got a computer system on it, and it will it knows how hard you drive. The harder you drive, the quicker it wants you to change your oil. True, because I remember going downhill a very steep hill once, and I left it on second gear. To see how it see see what happens. I I did I was sick of pressing a brake on this really steep long hill, and by the time I got to the bottom, it was revving at about four. 4,000 revs, and as soon as I got to the bottom, the oil change light came on. I thought, oh no, what did I do? It, it's because it knew the car had worked extremely hard for a long period of time. It didn't like it, so it said, you need to change oil. So it came up straight away. The Conversely to that, if you drive really easy, really smooth, really light, your oil change can last a while, a lot longer, and it's fully synthetic anyway. So there's that's another point. Right, if for the people who say, oh, can you mix uh, oils, think about it. There's some oils you buy that is semi-synthetic, isn't it, right? So that's already a mixture of oils. So someone's mixed fully synthetic with um, non-synthetic oil to create semi-synthetic. So that is a mix already. Person says they're all... Uh, people... They want this person suggests that they do it right so they don't bugger up their uh, decent car. Okay, look. My best, my best advice for saving money and and running a really good uh, system is like I'm gonna do it. It takes four liters of oil to change a car. I, what I would do is three liters of this and one liters of that. That was on sale at seventeen pounds. Normally it's about forty-five pounds. So I picked that, I snatched that up right away. 0W30 is really, really runny. And this one is 5W30, which is recommended in the manual. And this one's recommended in the um, service manual. Think about it. This is a lighter density. I'll prove it to you right now than this. Right, this is the uh, owner's manual, stroke slight kind of service manual that I suggest everyone downloads and I download this straight from Ford's website in the UK so it's got all the specifications like 1.6 2 litre of course I'm getting to the point of 1.5 Duratorque TDCI that's the one I've got check check whether the ones available for your car of course make sure you've got the correct chart for your car right so Screen it down, it's got the oil capacities and lubricant. So we go down to here. So this is, this is if you look very closely, Focus CEW. Vehicles built from then, from old, uh, February 2015, which mine would have been. First edition. So it's like the electronic version of the owner's manual. So it's more up to date. So there it is. So zero W30. And it's got this specification with an A on it now. Now, however, that's not the important thing. We've already discussed that it can take both. This engine oil has been just this engine has been designed to use a castor and forward engine oil, which gives a few economy benefit while maintaining the durability of the engine. Adding oil, if you're unable to find oil that meets the specification defined by that, this A, which same as that, you must use SAE. 0 W30 that meets the specification defined by ACEA C2. There we go, there's that ACEA C2. So both of the oils that I bought for that for uh, use on my vehicles meets that ACEA C2. Mm. It says here alternatively you can use SAE5 W30 so you can go up a number, see? Recommends 0W30 on this updated uh, owner's manual, electronic one. And uh, you can use, it's not really a service one, it's an owner's one. Go up on the, to 5W30. That means the specification defined by wherever that is, D, or ACEA A5B5. And that's pretty much what we had on the, uh, the bottles. So 0W30 or... 5W30. It says here using oils other than 0W30 can result in long engine cranking periods, which we don't want, 
reduced engine performance, which, which we don't want, reduced fuel economy, which we really don't want, and increased emission levels, which we don't want. So, my theory, my answer to this question posed by many, many people is, I think you can definitely mix those two for my specific car, because, look, it can take 0 or 5W30. Now, the 0W30 is actually going to be floating on top of it at the end, of, on top of the 5W30 at night, if it doesn't mix, because it's at a slightly different density. And the first number, the the, uh, the 0W or the 5W, is, the, is its uh, viscosity, which is its runniness when it's cold. The second number is its runniness when it's hot. So... If I'm putting in something that is runny uh, at the cold start and the thing is already floating on the top of the 5W30, which is the thicker one, imagine it's a cold start, that means that the oil, the, the 0W30, is going to actually reach the parts just as easy as if you filled it up completely with 4 litres of uh, 0W30. Because it's all it's floating at the top, it's going to reach those really hard to reach little crevices uh, on the uh, camshaft. So that's that's my argument for it. And why not? You can you I can use both. I'm allowed to use both, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be trying to save money, and uh, because I found the zero W thirty normally I use five W thirty, found it on the cheap. It's magnetic. It's got these sort of mag magnetic kind of particles and I'm not sure exactly how it is I just snatched it up at 17 pounds it's like more than more than half the price so it's better saving half the price it's probably like 60% off so why not right so into Google density of 0 W30 oil watch click on it it actually gives you a number I think remember that number so it is all the things you can buy and there's the one I bought. Oh, it's thirty-five pounds from Alfreds at the moment, not seventeen. So it's half price. Eight hundred and forty-three point five kilograms per meter squared. So that's the density of it. Zero W thirty. Right. Remember that number. Eight four three point five. Okay. So we'll go. We'll change that to five W thirty. So five W thirty. And 5W30 is, 5W30, density at normal temperatures is 859. All right, so it's denser. There we go. So 5W30 is denser. And so on and so on. I'm pretty sure of it. And uh, I've checked before. As you go up in the uh, first number, the more denser the fluid. So the, the lighter fluid, the zero, floats on top of the... Five. Why not? Why not mix them? Is my argument, and and scientifically it makes perfect sense, and also to your pocket it makes perfect sense. And here is this ten W thirty. Oops, in the wrong units. We'll have to change them. Range from uh, American to English or European. It's SI units. So I wanted to, I wanted to just have a look at really dense stuff that people use oil flushes for. So remember, the zero W four thirty is eight eight hundred forty three point five. The five W thirty is eight hundred fifty nine, going denser kilograms per meter squared. The now here the ten W thirty is eight hundred sixty five, so denser. The 10 W40 is 865. The second number didn't make any difference. Notice the change in the second number from 30 to 40 didn't make any difference. The first number certainly does make a difference. 20 W50. Very thick, much, much thicker. So the higher number, the thicker it is. It's 872. So it's even more denser. So why on earth would I flush an engine? And this is what this is the stuff they use. This stuff to flush engine. Why would I even contaminate my engine with this sort of thickness of oil? It could linger in there somewhere, and then and then 
really caused some problems later on. Why well, it doesn't make sense to flush engines. So there's another kind of common myth I'm trying to say, you know, dispel, trying to say why, why. I, the only other reason I can think of why this person said that is because they sell oil in a shop or something. They want people to, to change their oil every 3,000 miles because they sell more oil. And uh, just to scare people to, to not do their own kind of research and do their own work on their car and, and to go and, and uh, take their car to their... Uh, to to those people's garages and then uh, you know have that done to it and who knows what they might put in it instead of your zero W thirty you might put that because that's on the cheap you don't know I'm not saying definitely but they definitely will put that if they if they recommend on oil flush anyway that's all I got to say on that right I just want to interject on my own video just to bring you what I know of and what I really knew of uh, of friction, okay, so because at the end of the day you add car oil to your car's engine for to reduce friction that's the basic point of it and to cool it so friction on a microscopic level so what is friction if you've got rough surface a in rough surface B for example, friction is when a is trying to slide over B and it's basically catching catching in these little points that's what it really is that is what friction is so here's a tire on the road uh, here's a box trying to slide on the surface and where it catches it's trying to move it's just trying to catch it and it put, puts force uh, horizontal force uh, on it uh, on the surface where they meet so here small normal force imagine there's a liquid imagine that is your surface of say I don't know something to do with metal part and another metal part, and they're in contact. A small metal, small normal force. The uh, it's not really touching. The liquid's kind of holding it apart. A large normal force, and fr that's why friction increases when you have a, a when you have more load. So when you load on your vehicle, there's actually a formula. I remember the force. Say say. Uh, Say the force is horizontal and it's uh, your your wheel's hub, okay. The force is uh, is equal to what you call mu and uh, weight of the car times the weight of the car. So the higher the weight of the car, the mu is like a constant. The higher the weight of the car, the more the friction. So so it, it's demonstrated here. The higher the weight of your car, the more these these kind of knobbly bits are being pushed together. And uh, there's another picture I found where the force was which force was shown where is it gone oh this one this one here so this is this kind of represents it when 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 you when you trying to slide two surfaces against each other and there's friction there is a there is a force to the normal of the two surfaces meeting so there's a force that way and a force that way and now of course the uh, the upward force isn't really uh, well will make a difference. It's the horizontal force that's the the main um, resistance to moving it. The upward force is just pushed the, the surfaces apart, which is kind of weight. You're wasting energy as well, but you're wasting energy in lifting it. Uh, so I guess yes, yes, uh, even upward force because you're wasting energy lifting it uh, microscopically. You are wasting um, the energies not going to, into doing useful force but to, going into doing doing not useful force but anyway my point is oil uh, between two surfaces in your car its job is to kind of basically, basically sit between the gaps there and if you was to have a one molecule thick of um, an oil it'll basically roll like a like a bunch of rollers on top of each other and the surfaces never touch that's the point of oil so if you had this so if if this was imagine this was on a microscopic level and this was like a super smooth surface between two surfaces of your car say for example uh, the cam the cam uh, the cam nodules and the, um, the, the the top of the pistons right Let's say it was something like that, and so it's super smooth, and so microscopically the oil particles may may be about so big, say, okay, 
Oh, he's so big. So they'll basically, these two happily sit on top of the oil particles, which are, should be perfectly spherical in theory. And they'll just roll across like a, like a skateboard or something. So, however, if you've got a rough surface, okay, I'll get to my point in a minute. If you have a very rough surface, imagine it's very jagged, you need more than one layer of oil. You might need two, three, four layers of molecule thick of oil. So the rougher the surface, the more oil you need. Right. So the point is, if you've got a, a runnier liquid, a 0W30 rather than a 5W30, it's going to reach the, the really important parts where the, the surfaces of your, your car's engine is very, very smooth. And it just needs that super kind of uh, slippery small molecule molecule to get in between and it just needs that one layer if it was super smooth right so the art so the so do you need actually f four liters of this zero w40 uh, zero w30 if that's the recommended um, oil the answer is no because because modern surfaces and cars are very, very smooth. They're very, very well done. It's only when you've got a really old banger and it's like really pitted that you need a large volume of this 0W30 in theory, right? If it, everything was very, very smooth. In fact, I remember doing it, my chemistry teacher doing an experiment where he dropped one drop of this oil called oleic acid. Don't know what it is. Oleic, I do remember it. And he dropped it onto a... Uh, a vessel, a flat vessel full of water, and this vessel was, I think was one meter squared. I think scientifically it makes sense. One meter squared, he dropped one drop in, and it spread out almost to the edge of this one meter squared uh, container full of water. So, one drop of oleic acid. So, one drop of oleic acid can spread to all the way to nearly one meter squared. So, my point is. You don't really need a lot of oil if your surfaces are really smooth. That's the whole point. I'm proving it. You don't really need like four liters. You just you don't. It's not the volume that counts. It's the surface area that your oil covers. And of course, how pitted your surfaces are. The more pitted, the more oil you'll need. But still, you probably still even if it was kind of pitted, and it wasn't super smooth like on the cam uh, cam nodules. Uh, it, you won't need you won't need really four liters one liter out of uh four is uh your zero w40 would do a zero w30 and three liters is five w30 is mixed up would be just as good as if you've had four liters of zero w30 it's a bit of a complicated subject i hope i've kind of explained my point and i've interjected here so back to the video so here it is that's my explanation of why it's okay to use one liter of 0 w40 even that's the recommended type of uh, oil for my car and three liters the rest of it on 5w30 although that is also recommended but it's going to work just as well i hope that kind of uh, supports my argument with this um study into the friction between uh, surfaces i already knew this you know what friction is uh, i hope that helps and uh, if it's, you want to leave a comment leave a comment below uh, i want to hear what i'm interested to hear what you want to say as well do you mix your oils are you so pedantic that you must have one type of oil do you flush your engine with really thick oil now do you think it's a really bad idea to do that? That's my final point on there. So let me know, know what you guys think. I can't see as any other possible way of not mixing oils when you do oil change because how can you really remember what you used last time, to be honest? They, they, Ford recommends Castrol, and that is Castrol, but you might have used uh, Petronas before. So you mix it all. You might have used 5W30, and then another time you might use 0W30. Definitely don't flush it with, like, the, like this person says, because you could they'll, they flush cars with 20W40, really cheap oil. You don't want that hanging in your car, okay? They're, I wouldn't bother doing old flushes. 
especially if you use really thick oil. So what do you guys think? Let me know. Comment below. Thanks for watching.